is Amanda Street, and I work with Pinellas Community Composting Alliance. I started Pinellas Community Composting Alliance to help people learn how to compost. It really took off. I was surprised that so many people wanted to learn how to compost or compost better. Not just in your backyard, but in a community garden or an urban farm or a place like Eggert College. The message I get from most people is that they want to do better. They want to make better choices for their families, for the planet. A lot of suggestions say like buy solar panels. Well, that's really expensive. Or go vegetarian. That's a really big change that many people don't want to make necessarily. But composting is something that anybody can do to make a really big impact. I'm obsessed. <laughs> She's obsessed with composting. No, um, composting is, is, it's a way to grow community. It's a way to come together in a way that is, um, making a really big difference. Right now we're at Eckerd College. We're out in the garden area on the side where we bring the food scraps from the dorms, the offices, and cafeterias. Eckerd College is choosing to compost its food scraps to set an example for their college students. The food can be returned to the earth, it can be recycled, upcycled into beautiful soil, and that soil will be used to enrich the garden. There's a beautiful garden here on campus that grows food. Every year, 22 million pounds of food is wasted on college campuses. That's a little bit higher than the average consumer because most college campuses have dining halls that are buffet style. So students can take as much as they want and often their eyes are bigger than their bellies. So here at Eckerd College, they, they have a pretty organized system in place. In the cafeteria, the students take their leftover food and they put it in a separate bin. They separate their food, just like you would separate your trash and your recycling at home. Later, when that bin is full, it's placed into a larger bin. And that bin is taken out by a team of college students. In the compost area, we take the food waste and the mulch and we put it in these bins at first. It is a lot easier to handle food waste when it's in these bins for the, the compost team. It begins the composting process. Every day, Eckerd College is making about a cubic yard so far of, of compost. That, that's quite a bit. That's a really big impact, especially considering that we're going to be using it to grow more food. So it's mixed in these bins, the food waste and the mulch and then always covered with a thick layer of mulch. This compost bin has some visible food waste in it. It should have been covered up and it wasn't. So if we were to just dump this in here and walk away, pretty soon there would be black flies, there would be odor, and that's not what we want. That's not a healthy compost pile. We need to cover this up with mulch. There will be about 60% tree mulch, um, carbon materials, to 40% food waste. That keeps the heat in, it keeps any odors from escaping, and prevents flies and rats and raccoons and anything from getting in. There should not be any odor, even with all of this compost out here. Sometimes we find some contaminants that we just take out and set aside. Low stick or something. Microbes, small little microorganisms, they start to break down the food waste. They start to break down the, the mulch. We have here a couple of different composting critters. We have a beetle and a millipede. They are decomposers, that's their job, and while we don't want bugs in our house or in our kitchen necessarily, having them in your compost is actually really good. One of the signs of a healthy compost pile is having some living creatures in there. 
the microbial activity that when they grow and reproduce, it makes heat, it gets hot. That heating process kills the pathogens in the food and speeds up the composting. Once it gets to the thermal composting range, hot composting range above 131, we will turn it after a few days and it'll begin heating back up again. We turn it to aerate the compost, we turn it to make sure that we're observing the whole quantity of compost in the bin, and also to make sure that those little microbes have enough air to breathe. Just like you and I, they are tiny little animals and have basic needs like food, water, and air. The brown materials and the food scraps, the green materials, those are the food and then they need the oxygen to breathe and water to drink. Once we have turned it um, between three and five times, then we'll take and put it in a windrow so it can finish the curing process. A windrow is a long row, kind of in a holding area for the compost to finish. Once it's finished composting and curing, then it can be used in our gardens, or in your gardens. <laughs> well, my name is Hunter Gowen. I'm one of the coordinators here at the Student Garden. And so essentially what we've been doing this year is taking compost from the cafeteria. And we've been using it to grow everything from bananas, tomatoes, kale, and even some native flowering plants so that way we can get good uh, pollinator diversity.